Central causes of facial weakness, including a stroke, are upper face sparing, but the peripheral uh, patterns or causes of facial weakness are uh, usually involving both upper and the lower face. But why is that so? Uh, to explain that, we can look at the anatomy of uh, the facial nerve nucleus, nucleus and the pathway of innervation. Uh, at the level of the lower pons, in front of the fourth ventricle, um, we're going to have uh, our facial nucleus, and the facial nucleus uh, will, uh, the fibers from it will pass behind the abducens nucleus, and they will form a little bump in front of the fourth ventricle. Uh, the bumps are called uh, uh, the facial colliculi, an important landmark. And the fibers will pass again behind the abducens nucleus and then will exit into the uh, pontine uh, system. And uh, then the fibers will go to the face. Now, looking at uh, the innervations coming from the cortex to the nucleus, uh, first it's, it's important to know that the facial nucleus has two parts a ventral part, which receives innervations from the cortex that will eventually go to the lower face and a dorsal part which receives uh, innervations from uh, the cortex going to uh, the upper face. The ventral part receives information which are in blue from the contralateral uh, cortex coming through the cortical bulbar tract, the central tract, and uh, uh, the dorsal nucleus of the facial nucleus will receive both uh, pathways from the ipsilateral cortex as well as the contralateral cortex. Uh, so as you can see, if there is a lesion here, uh, such as in Bell's palsy affecting the facial nerve itself, uh, you're going to involve all of these fibers. So both the upper face and the lower face will be involved. Uh, but if the cortical bulbar tract or the central tract is influenced by a central process such as a stroke, multiple sclerosis, sometimes a tumor, etc., uh, what's going to happen is uh, the uh, fibers from the ipsilateral cortex will still supply to the upper face on the ipsilateral side. So your patient will present with sparing of the uh, ipsilateral upper face and involvement of the lower face. Um, but what if the facial uh, nucleus itself is uh, influenced by a, a central process? So if the whole nucleus is gone, you can assume that the end outcome will be very similar to a facial nerve uh, palsy. So both upper and lower face weakness. It's important to mention that this is uh, not a very common scenario. Uh, the facial nerve nucleus is not very big, so a, for example, a stroke causing weakness or causing defect in just this area is very uh, uncommon. Uh, typically, other areas of the pons will also be involved and patient will present with other symptoms.